Hello, my name is Pierre Tessier. I'm the manager for systems engineering at Wavefront by VMware. And today we're going to talk about Kubernetes and monitoring those applications and the infrastructure contained within your Kubernetes environment. Kubernetes is great for developers. It gives them the platform to work in the world that they're most familiar with so they can deploy the workloads in ways that they want to deploy them through config changes. But with this great flexibility of the platform comes great complexity, especially when it comes to monitoring those environments. And today we're going to talk about that. Really, in Kubernetes, there's two things we need to worry about when it comes to monitoring. The first one is the infrastructure associated with Kubernetes. Your nodes, the pods, your services, config maps, so on and so forth. The other one is the applications contained within those workloads that you've deployed themselves. We're going to cover them both. To start off with Wavefront, we have something known as a Wavefront Kubernetes Collector, and it lives as a daemon set inside of your nodes. So let's go ahead and draw that right here. The Wavefront Kubernetes Collector is responsible to collect all your infrastructure metrics, and it'll do leader election to make sure it can get your cluster metrics, cube state metrics, and everything else related to the cluster itself. When it collects those metrics from the local kubelets, it'll go ahead and send that information all the way up to Wavefront. Now, that's great because we've got all the information we know about our pods and our containers, such as network, CPU, memory load, disk, everything else is all there for us. What about those pods and containers and the application workloads within? Let's take a pod right here. Let's start off with a popular service that people might use, Redis. Very popular to get data out of. Luckily for us, with Wavefront, Redis is a well-supported plugin that we have for the Wavefront Kubernetes collector. And once deployed, we will automatically pull those metrics down. Same goes for other popular services, such as MySQL. Or maybe you have Elasticsearch or a MongoDB. All of these very popular services that we're used to get will automatically be collected and configured for collection. In fact, any input plugin associated with the popular open source Telegraph agent is supported by the Wavefront Kubernetes Collector using those exact same configuration techniques that you've used before. Really great to use and very friendly for developers. But speaking of those developers, sometimes they do code instrumentation. In a world of Kubernetes, Prometheus endpoints is where we do it. So what if you had a custom application that emitted Prometheus endpoint? Well, as long as you subscribe to those Prometheus annotations, Prometheus IO forward slash scrape, for example, they will automatically be discovered and scraped for you as well by the Wavefront Kubernetes collector. This is a zero config operation for you. All of these pieces of data will now flow through into the Wavefront pipeline. And if desired, we could even have different scrape intervals for each one of them. So maybe your application metrics come every 10 seconds, but your infrastructure metrics every 60 seconds, and Redis and MySQL maybe every 30. Whatever is right for you, we could work with those worlds. And that's basically, in a nutshell, how we're going to get the data from Kubernetes, both the infrastructure and the application workloads running on them, into Wavefront. But what can we do with that? In the world of Kubernetes, there is also a separate metrics pipeline associated with the Kubernetes cluster itself. It is really used for it. This flows through something known as metric server. Now, metric server reserves just a couple core metrics associated with each workload, CPU and memory. It will communicate these metrics to the API server, also a core Kubernetes component. Now, within Kubernetes, developers love that their workloads automatically scale. They can scale them both vertically and horizontally. With horizontal scaling, we have this great tool, part of the Kubernetes ecosystem, known as the Horizontal Pod Autoscaler. Let's write this guy right here. Now, what the Horizontal Pod Autoscaler does is based on metrics it's receiving through the metric server and the API server, 
and the rules that you've configured for it, it'll automatically scale your pods, add additional workloads, or reduce them back and forth. And it does this by communicating back and forth with the kubelet itself to scale those pods for you. And this is great if all you want to scale with was memory or CPU. What if you wanted to scale on request load or network traffic or something completely different in itself? Luckily at Wavefront, we also provide a horizontal pod autoscaler adapter. Now, what the horizontal pod autoscaler adapter does is it'll communicate with the horizontal pod autoscaler, but it uses any metrics inside of Wavefront to drive those rules. So it could be anything, metrics coming from anywhere else within your Kubernetes infrastructure or even outside of it. Maybe you've got traffic loads coming into your external load balancer and you want to scale based on that before it hits your cluster. That's absolutely something you can do using the horizontal pod autoscaler. So combined with Wavefront's automatic out-of-the-box collection of all your infrastructure and application workloads and an auto pod autoscaler adapter, we now have everything we need to build a very robust monitored Kubernetes environment. Thank you.